all right in this video we will be talking about shape factors and how we use shape factors to approximate some solutions or some problems and to find solutions easily so uh, for complicated 2d or 3d problems it takes a lot of time to find the analytical solution or sometimes the analytical solutions do not exist so uh, what we do is we use uh, some existing solutions of uh, to the heat diffusion equation uh, for some standard cases and we see if our problem fits into those standard cases and if we can use those existing solutions we just uh, use them to approximate or to calculate the heat uh, transfer rate uh, in that particular scenario so uh, what are these exact solutions uh, what are these existing solutions uh, for uh, to the heat diffusion equation they're called as our uh, shape factors so uh, shape factor is denoted by uh, uppercase s and the heat transfer rate uh, when you know the shape factor for a particular case is given by s times the thermal conductivity times the delta t where s is the shape factor here now table 4.1 in your textbook uh, lists 11 different cases and lists the shape factor in, in those scenarios so uh, whenever you come across a problem in your homework or in your exam uh, you need to refer to this table and uh, look at the constraints and see which of the cases is applicable in your scenario and what shape factor you can use there so uh, let's see if if we have a plane wall for a plane wall what will our shape factor be so for a plane wall your equation for heat transfer rate will be uh, ka times delta t by l so this makes your shape factor as a divided by l and according to this the dimensions or the units for your shape factor will be in meters okay so uh, then what uh, what if you were asked to write the uh, thermal resistance if you know the shape factor so your thermal resistance will be 1 upon the thermal conductivity times the shape factor okay so these are some important equations that you must know so this is just a, an example for a plane wall I would recommend that you find the shape factor for say a cylinder for yourself we know what the uh, heat transfer rate for cylinder is so using that find the uh, shape factor for cylinder and the uh, thermal resistance in that what will the thermal resistance be in that case okay and please uh, go through table 4.1 we will also we'll, we'll be looking at a few cases in uh, table 4.1 uh, to understand how to read the table and uh, what different quantities mean so this is what you will see in table 4.1 you will have different cases or uh, which will represent different scenarios you will have a schematic of uh, each case you will see under what restrictions or under what constraints were these shape factors evaluated and the actual formula for the shape factor now say for example case one says that it's an isothermal sphere buried in a semi infinite medium now what does semi infinite mean so semi infinite means that one of the walls or one of the surfaces 
is at a finite difference from your body of interest or from the object of interest whereas uh, the other other surface is uh, at infinity so it's its extent so your surface say your surface 1 which is right here is at a finite distance z from this so, uh, solid sphere whereas this surface will extend up till infinity and will be an elongated long surface now keep in mind the constraint here is that you can apply this particular formula which uses the diameter of the sphere which uses the z distance that's the distance between the uh, finite surface and the and the center of the sphere so that distance must be greater than the radius or diameter divided by 2 so only if this condition is applied you can use the formula of shape factor as 2 pi d by 1 minus d by 4 z now uh, what actually happens uh, when you look at a shape factor and how and what is the mode of heat transfer so your heat is still being transferred through the medium between the surface and uh, between the surface and the sphere so in this particular scenario your sphere is immersed in a fluid so this fluid can be air or water or any other fluid however this fluid will not be flowing so it it'll it, it they won't it, the air won't be blowing inside that uh, sphere uh, inside that medium but what we want to find is we want to find how much heat is being transferred between the surface and the sphere through this medium and that's why uh, and this problem would be a very difficult problem but because we know what formula of shape factor we use sh shape factor to use we can just use this formula substitute it in uh, the equation for to find the heat transfer rate we know the temperature differences we know uh, the shape factor and what is k so your k is the thermal conductivity of the medium through which heat transfer takes place so it will be the thermal conductivity of the gray medium let's say that's a gray medium so if it's uh, surrounded by air it will be the thermal conductivity of air if it's surrounded by water it will be the thermal conductivity of water so now so that's how you interpret this formula and choose the appropriate properties okay so let's look at some different cases you have case 2 where it says that you have a cylinder with a finite dimension uh, immersed in a semi-infinite medium you have a vertical cylinder in a semi-infinite medium and that's the condition for this and uh, you have two cylinders in an infinite medium now so the medium in which the two uh, cylinders exist is uh, is large is very large and no surfaces around the cylinders is near any of the known surfaces so you have this surface extending to infinity in all directions and the only constraint uh, that we need to look at is the uh, diameters how big are the diameters and how much is the distance between the, uh, the centers of the two cylinders and then use the equation of the shape factor right here to find the heat transfer rate so after watching this video I would recommend that go to table 4.1 go through all the cases and see if you understand what those cases mean
there are 11 cases listed in this table and uh, whatever problems we solve or will be asked in the exam will be from uh, these 11 cases so you don't have to like calculate the shape factor for any of the problems by yourself okay so let's understand uh, the concept of shape factor with the help of a simple example so let's say we have a, a square enclosure with the and it has a width of w so we have a square enclosure and then uh, we have a cylinder which goes in and out of the page so it's a infinitely long cylinder uh, that's placed in sort of the center of the uh, center of the enclosure the enclosure is uh, filled with air so the air here is not blowing so it's it's sort of a still air so we won't be considering any heat transfer by convection separately and uh, we have to find what is the Q prime or the heat transfer rate per unit length so until now we were either finding the heat transfer rate or the heat trans or heat flux that was heat transfer rate plus per unit area but in this particular problem we'll be looking we will be finding the heat transfer rate per unit length now the temperatures uh, that are given to us are we know the temperature of the enclosure uh, sorry the temperature of the sphere is uh, 320 kelvin temperature of the enclosure is 300 kelvin the diameter of the uh, cylinder is 0 0.04 meters and the width of the enclosure is 0 0.5 meters and the thermal conductivity of air is a very small value and it's 0 0.026 so I, th I think it should be 0 0.026 and not 0026 so that's the thermal conductivity of air it's 0 0.0265 watt per meter square so the equation that we'll be using is the standard equation so our q will be thermal conductivity of air because that's the medium through which heat transfer is occurring multiplied by the shape factor times the temperature difference t1 minus t2 and obviously uh, because t1 is greater than t2 that will be the direction of heat transfer now uh, this particular scenario resembles to case 6 from table 4.1 and uh, the equation for thermal conductive or oh, sorry the shape factor is given by s is equal to 2 pi l l is the length of the cylinder but we want but we will be looking at uh, we want to find the heat transfer rate per unit length so that L will be cancelled that L will cancel out later so we don't need to know what the length is divided by the natural log of 1.08 into W by D that's the width by the diameter so uh, as I said let's use this value of shape factor in our equation 1 here K will be our uh, it will be thermal conductivity of air and uh, times the shear factor multiplied by the temperature difference we need to find the heat transfer per unit length so uh, our Q prime will be Q by L which will uh, cancel out the length that's the L that's right here in the formula for shape factor and then we plug in the uh, values that are given so 2 pi times the thermal conductivity that's the 0 0.0265 watt per meter square times uh, the temperature difference 320 minus 300 divided by natural log of 1.08 times the width which is 0 0.5 divided by the diameter which is 0 0.04 meters and after like calculating this you can do the calculation on your calculator 
we get the heat transfer rate per unit volume as 1.28 watt per meter so we have a per meter in the denominator and that's because we need to find it per unit length and uh, that's how you use a shape factor to find the heat transfer rates in uh, in any scenario so a uh, thing to uh, some a few things to note are that you must read the problem properly and identify if you are required to use a shape factor the problem will either hint you or mention that you have to uh, use a shape factor to solve this problem the second is you need to choose the shape factor appropriately from the table so make sure you uh, follow all the constraints or restrictions that are given and read the cases in table 4.1 carefully.